Hi. This week in Module 2 of New Testament Survey, we begin our journey into the New Testament text itself by looking at the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, two of the synoptic Gospels. Smith and Kim in our textbook this week do a really good job of addressing the synoptic problem, so I'm not going to rehearse that. But the important point to emphasize is that the synoptic Gospels mean simply when taking together, the emphasis of the Gospels is to tell the story of Jesus. And in fact, Mark and Matthew, as two of the synoptic Gospels, are obsessed with emphasizing the identity of Jesus Christ. The synoptic Gospels identify who Jesus is is for us through the telling of his story. And so we should not be surprised that the Gospel of Mark is particularly obsessed with the question of Jesus's identity. Over and over and over again in the Gospel, Jesus is found asking some form of that question we encountered last week. Who do you say that I am? And in Mark's telling of the story of Jesus, you cannot answer this question, and you cannot really understand the identity of who Jesus is without becoming a disciple of Jesus. The word disciple comes from the Greek word meaning to follow after, and it has something of the connotation of participating in the life of. Not just simply imitating, but sharing in the life of the one that you are following after. In fact, taking up the life of that one. And that's what's important about Mark's emphasis upon discipleship. We only truly know Jesus' identity when we follow after him and find ourselves a part of the story find ourselves identified with Jesus, and in fact, identified by Jesus' own story. We are disciples of Jesus insofar as we are bound up with the story that Jesus is living in the Gospel of Mark. And so the Gospel of Mark begins with the announcement of Jesus as God's Son in chapter 1, verses 1 through 20, and and a, and, a, and a call to follow him, a call to discipleship. And it ends with an empty tomb and simply the call to follow after the resurrected Jesus who has gone ahead into Galilee. In Mark chapter 8, when Peter gives his famous pronouncement to Jesus' question, who do you say that I am, by declaring, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, Jesus immediately begins to talk about how this will lead to a conflict with the powers in Jerusalem and his death on the cross. And then he says these words, if anyone wants to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. By saying this, Jesus is not just saying that life is going to be hard for the disciple. No, he's saying that the disciple now belongs to Jesus' story. That the way to death on the cross is supposed to be the way that the disciples themselves go in this world. And so to say that Mark's gospel identifies Jesus through discipleship is to say that the story of Jesus' cross and resurrection, as told by Mark, is the story that all of Jesus' disciples share. A story of sharing in the sufferings of Jesus, and a story of how the whole world, and, and everyone who follows after Jesus, opens to God's reign as Jesus opens to God on his way to the cross. The central point of all of this is that discipleship for Mark is focused upon who Jesus is as Messiah. And as we learn from the first module's lecture, to say Jesus is Messiah is to say that Jesus is that one who is sent by God to announce the revolutionary overturning of the powers 
and principalities, the religious and political powers that were dealing oppression during that day, to pronounce their overturning and to pronounce a new world in which the reign of God's love is complete, or at least begins. And so to say that Jesus is the Messiah is to say that Jesus is the one who is announcing the revolutionary overturning of the religious and political powers of this world by proclaiming the reign of God's love for the poor and oppressed. To be a disciple of Mark's Jesus, then, is to follow Jesus' way into this reign of God, and to understand the cross and the resurrection as showing us the way in which God overcomes the powers of oppression in life, the powers of oppression in the life of Jesus, and the powers of oppression in the life of his followers. Now, when we turn to Matthew, we find no less of an emphasis upon discipleship than we do in the Gospel of Mark. But of all four Gospels, Matthew is clearly the most Jewish gospel. And most scholars agree that Matthew is written sometime after the destruction of the Jewish temple in AD 70. And so Matthew is very much concerned with addressing the question of Jewish identity in the face of this of the loss of this central theme or this central place, the temple of Jewish identity. And the way that Matthew addresses this question is he answers the question of Jesus' identity as being in continuity with Israel, with the Jews. Jesus' primary identity in the Gospel of Matthew, in fact, is that of rabbi, a Jewish teacher. Jesus is understood at not to abolish the law, not to abolish Torah, but to fulfill it, as it says in Matthew 5, 17 through 20. And Jesus is depicted as being sent, not, sent especially to Israel in Matthew 15, and the disciples are explicitly told to go in ministry to the people of Israel. But it's important to understand in reading Matthew's gospel that Matthew plays a kind of rhetorical trick here. For the way in which Jesus and Christian discipleship fulfill Jewish identity are actually subversive of the Jewish law in many ways. For example, Jesus is depicted not only as rabbi, but as the one rabbi or teacher who supplants all other rabbis. Jesus alone is now understood to be the teacher, or just teacher. And Jesus is seen as fulfilling the law by demanding a righteousness that not only meets the law, but that exceeds the law of the Pharisees. In Matthew 5.20, this idea of exceeds the law means to say that Jesus is instituting a way of life that not even the law itself can account for. Furthermore, in Matthew, adherence to the law is not adherence to a strict set of rules, as it was in many Jewish communities of that time, such as the Qumran community in first century AD, but rather Jesus's Adherence to the law is a kind of transformation of how we relate to others. Finally, the disciples are sent to the Jews precisely to overturn Jewish national separatism. Matthew ends with a commission, the Great Commission as we know it, to spread the gospel and demand obedience to this new law of mercy from all nations. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Matthew speaks of all people participating in the final messianic banquet. The Jews at that time expected the Messiah to come and to vindicate Israel by overcoming the oppressive powers of their day and throughout their history. Jesus overturns these expectations. His vindication of Israel actually includes the announcement that God's reign of love is for all people, for all nations. And his gospel 
puts Israel in service to that reign, in service to all people, in service to the world. So to sum up, in both Mark and Matthew, discipleship is is emphasized as obedience to the reign of God as coming in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. But where Mark's focus is upon the way in which discipleship is a challenge to the political realities of Jesus' day and is subversive of unjust political rule, In Matthew, the focus is on the way in which discipleship is a challenge to and subversive of the narrow religious rules and strict adherence to religious law in Jesus' day. And both the Gospels of Mark and Matthew agree upon this point. It is only in following after the way of Jesus. It is only by finding ourselves a part of Jesus' story as Joanna Dewey helps us to imagine in this week's module through her sermon, Women on the Way. It is only as we find ourselves following after and participating in the story of Jesus that we truly understand and recognize who Jesus is as Messiah.